Hey, welcome back to Godot 101. This is part three, where we're going to continue talking about scripting and how you can use scripts to make your nodes behave the way you want. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous videos, please do go back and start there because we cover a lot of the basic concepts in those, and I don't want you to get lost. All right, so let's get started. All right, when we left off, we had our sprite animating by moving across the screen and spinning but it just goes off the edge when it reaches the edge and we want to make it bounce. So we need to detect when we've reached the edges of the screen and reverse the horizontal or vertical component of the velocity when we do so. So we're going to go back over to our script here and in our script, the sprite.gd script, that's the one that's attached to right down here attached to the sprite node. So in this script, we need to know what the screen size is. And the screen size is something you set over here in the project settings. So if you click on scene, project settings, there's all sorts of information in here. And under display, you have your width and height of your game screen. And it's set right now for me to 1024 by 600, but I can change that and it'll change how big the game window is. So I'm just, I'm just going to keep that for now, but I want my code to be able to know that and know how big the screen size is. So I'm going to make a new, I'm going to declare a new variable called screen size. And in the ready, when that gets launched, I'm going to get rid of this print here. I want to get that screen size. And so the command to get that is get viewport rect. You can see the auto suggest finding it dot size. So if you ever need to know what a function does in Godot, you can highlight it like this. And if you click on help, contextual help, shift F1 is the shortcut, we'll go and look up that function. You got to remove the parentheses. There we go. And you can go and see that it's going to give you the viewports boundaries as a rect2. And a rect2 is an object that describes a rectangular bounding box and has all of these properties, including a position, a size, and an end. And the size is a vector because it's going to have a width and a height, right? two, two values. Okay? So that's what, we're, that's what we're going for here. So now we'll have this um, screen size variable. We'll have a width of 1024 and a height of 600. And down here in our movement, we're going to need to detect when we've reached those extents, when the, the position has reached that. So to make things a little easier to track, we're going to have a position variable as well. Okay, And so what I'm going to do with that position is at the beginning here, I'm going to set position equal to screen size divided by 2. So that will divide both of them, the width and the height by two. So that's going to make our sprite start at the center of the screen. So no matter what size the screen is, our position is going to be set to the center of it. And then what we want to do is we just want to set our position to that variable. And that variable will change by adding the velocity times delta. Okay. So all that's going to change so far is that we're just going to start at the center and still spin off. OK, so what we can do here is we can just say if the position x is greater than or equal to screen size dot width, or the position x is less than or equal to uh, 0, then we're going to take the velocity x and we're going to multiply by negative 1. And then we're going to do the same thing with the y. So I will just duplicate this and change these two y's. And this is going to be height times the velocity y. So now when we run it, we're going to see the sprite bounce off the wall. But one problem we still have is it's going to go, if you notice, it's going halfway off the wall first. And that's because in our sprite settings, see we have this button here marked checked for centered? 
that means that the position property is linked to the center of the sprite. Okay. If we were to uncheck that, go back to the 2D view here, then you see it shifts like that. The anchor point is here, so we'd be using that. Centered is fine, but we want to bounce when the edges hit, so we need to bounce before the center hits the wall. We need to know how big our sprite is. And so we can do that in our script as well with a variable. I'm going to call this the extents. That's the this is going to be the half of the width of the sprite and half of the height of the sprite. And it's going to be another vector too, because I only care about half the width and half the height, right? How far the center is from the edge. So the extents is going to be get texture dot get size divided by two. Okay. And these are both functions that the sprite node has in it. And so, for example, if we go to the textual help again, right, it's, there's lots of places where you can use get texture, but the sprite that gets texture is the one we care about, gives you back the texture, and it gives you back a texture object. Texture object has get size, and get size gives us back a vector two, right, a two dimensional vector. And then I'm going to divide it by two because I only really care about height. Uh, this texture that we're using is a 64 by 64 icon, so our extents are going to be 32 by 32. So now down here we can bounce, but we're going to have to split this up now and do the four walls separately. So starting with, we'll start with this one. So if we reach the screen size dot width minus extents dot width, then we're going to bounce, uh, change the velocity, multiply by negative one, okay? And to avoid getting stuck on the wall in the case where we move, you know, a little bit past the edge because of rounding errors or fractions, uh, we also want to make sure we put the edge against the edge. So we're going to say position x equals this value. And we do the same thing here with less than, instead of less than zero, it's less than extents dot width. And then we also set uh, pause x to extents dot width. Okay, and then we have to do the same thing again with the y. Okay, so to try this out, let's increase our speed a bit because I want to be a little faster so I can see it hit the edges. Okay. Now we should be staying in the screen. Nice. So the last thing I want to do here is I want to randomize this uh, velocity instead of having it be always the same. So we could do that here by setting in the ready our velocity to a random value. Right. And so there's a lot of ways we could do this. We could pick two random numbers. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a speed. And that speed is going to be a rand range. This is how you pick a random number. You say rand range. And then you can see it's going to give you back a floating point number between any two floating point numbers. So let's just say between 100 and 300 comma zero. So we're picking a random value in the positive x direction. So a, a random speed straight to the right. And then I'm just going to rotate that. So with a vector, you can rotate it by picking a angle. So let's go look at it. Vector two dot rotated. So what rotated does is it wants a angle in radians. So we need to pick a random number in radians. So I'm going to say rand range from 0 to 2 times pi. Pi is a constant that is built into Godot, so we don't have to tell it what it is. 
right? So we want to pick a random value between 0 and 2 pi, which is 360 degrees. So our velocity will be in any random direction. And so every time we play it, it's going to fly off in a different way. But wait, that didn't look different, did it? No, it's not. And the reason is that the in Godot, the rand range functions will produce the same values every time, which doesn't sound like very good randomization, but it is useful for testing. Sometimes you want to test things and get the same results every time. If you really, if you want the random numbers to be different every time, you can call randomize. Okay, randomize basically seeds the random number generator um, with a unpredictable value, so you don't know what your sequence of random numbers is going to be. So like that time it went up, that time it went to the left. Okay, not that. Okay, so now we're getting random directions and I'm going to add one more spin because I'm going to say spin is going to be a random rand range from negative pi to pi and that is just going to be spin is going to be how fast we rotate so that way I can get some different looking Spin. See, I'm spinning to the right that time. This time, let's see, this time the spin is very small. It's barely turning close to zero. This one was a little bit higher. Okay, so that'll do it for this time around. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how we can take this single sprite scene that we've made and use it to spawn multiple sprites using something called instancing. I hope you're enjoying following along. Um, if you are, please try and make sure you're always typing the code yourself. Even if you're following along, if you're doing the work yourself, it definitely helps everything get uh, locked into your brain and, and helps you understand what's happening. But if you do need the code, uh, I've linked to the code for this step in the comments below, and you can download the Godot project. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.